Hi everyone and welcome to week 12, NoSQL Scalability. So when we talk about SQL and NoSQL scaling, we are going to have sort of different things we have to worry about. So with SQL, we know that vertical scaling is easier and it actually takes a lot of work and effort to be able to do horizontal scaling. SQL is a relational database. It's made up of tables that have relationships to each other. SQL in general has a really strict schema. There's a very specific way the data is laid out and organized. Um, and, you know, the data is laid out like this pretty little castle. And um, we know that we have to interact with that data in a specific way. No SQL, however, was actually designed to be scalable. So horizontal scaling is actually easier to set up on no SQL. It's not relational, so there aren't relationships to keep track of. It's the pile of blocks. It's got a flexible schema. And you don't always have to have one, but it was designed to be used at scale. So the things that we were worrying about for SQL, we don't really have to worry about the same way when it comes to NoSQL. NoSQL architecture. So NoSQL, which again, remember this is not SQL or not only SQL. NoSQL doesn't have to use ACID. So we remember the ACID transactions are the um, being able to make sure that the data is done all at the same time, it's done consistently, it's done in isolation, um, and it's like guaranteed to be done. So we don't have to do ACID for NoSQL. There's actually lots of options for how transactions can work. High availability or the database always being available is assumed as part of the design. Like that's literally how somebody created NoSQL, making sure that it was always there. Horizontal scalability instead of vertical scalability. So we remember that vertical scalability is when we are adding more power to the server and horizontal scalability is adding more servers or nodes. NoSQL is designed to be horizontally scalable, which we know is easier to do than vertically scalable and doesn't have the same limitations. Vertical scalability runs into some limitations of how much can you afford to do this and how much can you reasonably even upgrade one server, whereas you can kind of add servers together somewhat indefinitely. Not completely indefinitely, you know, there are still limits, but it's not the same kind of limit. Um, you instead have to worry about communication between the nodes. NoSQL architecture also has something called dynamic provisioning for the servers. This means, um, let's say, for example, I had a NoSQL database set up and I have a thousand customers and I need three servers. Um, let's say something weird happens and it goes up to 10,000 and I need 10 servers. Well, I can, if it's dynamically provisioned, I can get those 10 and then I could potentially go back if I needed to. Um, so it's sort of no more than you need, but it's easier to get more power and easier to sort of add in servers. The distributed data storage. So you can have lots of different data types. One of the things that makes NoSQL, um, I really don't want to say better. It's not better. It's different is you can have a lot of different data types. You are not limited the way that SQL will limit the data types. You can also do hybrid and multi-model databases. So you can actually have multiple types of NoSQL. So like you could have document stores that also support key value stores. Like you don't have to kind of pick and choose. It's um, a little bit easier to sort of mix and match based off of what you need. NoSQL scaling challenges. Data is not guaranteed to be consistent immediately. It's got something called eventual consistency. Um, there's also some issues of corrupt data. So it's one of the things that comes if we don't have ACID transactions is, you know, oh yeah, yeah, no, I can totally update your email address. At some point, the entire database will have your email address updated. When, you say? Uh, at some point, guaranteed. 
so you can see where that might not be okay for some situations. Like in some situations, like email, uh, uh, it's fine. Not a big deal. Like you might get some people that are annoyed. Oh, why haven't you unsubscribed me yet? But like, it's not that big of a deal. Um, because there is no schema, storing the data isn't the problem. Getting something useful out of the data is. One of the things about SQL is it takes organized data. No SQL takes any and all data. So like your data is there. Uh, you, you can get it back out, but like, can you do anything useful with it? Well, it hasn't really been organized yet. So distinct, maybe. Um, new applications and integrations is the hard part. So if you don't have organized data, trying to get anything out of it ends up being the problem. So instead of the initial sort of upkeep cost that you'd have with SQL, where you're doing all of the organization up front um, before it's put into the database or while it's being put into the database before it's being used with NoSQL, you can just be like, yeah, I'll just deal with that later. But um, later comes for us all. So the real burden of figuring out how that data is organized and what you can get out of it ends up falling to the application rather than the organizer at the beginning. Once companies get big enough, they need more from their data. Once they have like official data analysts working, business analysts, people like that, they care about things like downtime. Um, and they will also care about things like unorganized data where it's like, yeah, oh yeah, I have all of this data about all of my customers. I don't know how it's put together or where any of it is, but it's definitely saved somewhere. So you can see where that would end up being a problem. Um, when we talk about NoSQL databases, you'll see really commonly people will talk about something called cap theorem. Because NoSQL databases are scaled horizontally, they are considered distributed computing. Distributed databases has an idea that you have these three things, consistency, availability, and partition tolerance, but you can only pick two. Consistency means that the data has to be up to date or throw an error. Availability says everything must get a response unless it's a failing node. Partition tolerance said that, that the system must work even when the messages are lost or delayed. Because network communication is considered lossy, no one will give up partition tolerance, so you have to pick one of the other two. So when you think about um, Sending information over the network, it most of the information gets through, but it doesn't always get through like first try. Um, and you have to make sure that enough is getting through that you can still sort of do what you need to do. And people are really not willing to sort of give that up. So partition tolerance is that we have to still be able to communicate with all of the nodes. Nobody is willing to give up communication between the nodes and you know oh whoopsies I lost a couple nodes oh well that's not an option so you have to pick availability or consistency so partition tolerance uh, the communications so you have to either say okay I'm willing to give up availability so sometimes things won't get a response or consistency um, the data might not be up to date and it might not throw an error and so you end up just having to pick SQL without scale is done on one node, so no communication is lost. So um, when you end up seeing SQL, um, the, it, it's considered one node. So if you look at the diagram, you see that somebody is giving up partition tolerance. It's because those are SQL databases. Um, and technically, SQL databases can give up partition tolerance if they are done on one node. If they are being horizontally scaled, then it's it's a different story. Um, so you end up just having to pick which one do you want to give up. So if you want to give up availability, um, Mongo and Redis choose to do that. Um, if you want to give up consistency, uh, Cassandra and Dynamo choose to do that. And different people will have different sort of arguments for why they are okay giving one or the other one up, but you just have to decide what works best for your situation. 
So NoSQL databases will use sharding to scale up. So breaking up the database into pieces is important for scaling in SQL and NoSQL. But NoSQL sharding actually happens in the background. So rather than kind of thinking about it, it's already been built into the design. So it just kind of happens and you assume that it happens. Because it was designed to scale using sharding, it's kind of there but invisible. The shards are equal, so you don't have to worry about load balancing as much. Uh, communication between the shards is still important. They use something called gossip protocol. Um, and data can be copied to other shards equally since the shards are equal. So it's basically sort of baked in a little bit more in a way that it wasn't with SQL. Now, um, when we talk about NoSQL, we'll see that a lot of the options are actually done in the cloud. You can have locally hosted instances of NoSQL, obviously, but NoSQL tends to happen for companies that really need to care about scale. Once a company starts to care about scale, they have probably evaluated some cloud options and may choose to go that direction. The two sort of popular options are database as a service and hosted. Database as a service is a company that's a third party that you can buy your database from. Database as a service is not like the name of a company. It's a any database as a service company that you could go to and you could say like, you know, hey, I'd like to buy a database for you, from you. This is popular for people that don't have in-house database talent, smaller companies that think they're going to get bigger, but they don't want to invest in that in-house talent yet might end up going with database as a service. Um, hosted is where you can have a virtual machine or a virtual image stored on a cloud server. Several companies actually make their money hosting VMs for people like um, Amazon, AWS, um, Microsoft, Google, Google Cloud, uh, Azure, places like that. They will actually make a lot of their money just sort of hosting virtual machines and virtual images. Um, and that's a perfectly reasonable business model. So database as a service is a turnkey option. So you basically just say like, hey, I've got some data. What can you do with it? And the company goes, I will take care of everything for you. Don't you worry your pretty little head about it. Vendors can get roll pricey, roll fast. Um, and another thing that they'll sometimes do is they'll get you all set up and you'll be like, wow, this is such a good deal. I can't believe it. And then you'll realize that something went wrong. And the only way that you can fix it is getting a consultant from that company to come in and fix it. And then you'll see the consultant's bill and then you'll realize where all of your cost savings went. It is not uncommon for consultants, any consultants, to cost several thousand dollars a day and have minimum day's work. Because everything is done by the third party, you don't really have to worry about it. They'll end up taking care of everything. You just tell them what you need and they will take care of it. The big downside to this is something called vendor lock-in. If you ever need to switch vendors or start doing in-house options or basically do anything that isn't vendor, vendor, please help me, uh, you can be up a creek and it's an expensive creek to be up. So vendor lock-in where you have the database and it's actually working great, but if you needed to change it to literally anything else, it might end up taking you months and costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not unreasonable. Um, and so you end up sort of getting into the situation where you're like, okay, well, I don't like what's going on here. I don't like how much I'm being charged. I don't really get quite what I want. And um, it's, too expensive to switch. Yay. Hosted VMs. So hosting on a cloud provider like AWS, Azure, or Google is popular for companies of all sizes. It's a reasonable intersection of cost and skill. Using that hosted VM means you have to have someone in-house. So you have to have somebody in the company that will run the database and be on call for the database. They're the ones that's the, you know, traditionally a DBA or database administrator. Um, they're the ones that will be dealing with all of the database stuff. This will allow you to not have to worry about the infrastructure and IT costs associated with your own servers because you're paying somebody else for that convenience. But database maintenance is now your problem. 
this is everything from general backups to data security. If anything goes down, it's your problem and it's your fault or whoever is running this. Um, and so having that option is cheaper than database as a service, but it's more things that you need to worry about. Um, it's kind of like database as a service is sort of like having um, a household manager that will go through and take care of everything for you, but um, yikes, is that expensive. A hosted VM is kind of like, you know, you're paying rent to live in the house, but you have to take care of a bunch of stuff, but you don't have to do the house maintenance, yay. So it's like cheaper than the house manager, but it's, you know, maybe not as cheap as, I don't know, cardboard boxes. Um, so database maintenance would need to be done by you, and that's everything. There's also a middle ground where the cloud company hosts the database service for you, um, but they won't necessarily have the 24-7 on-call service that a database as a service might. Uh, that 24-7 on-call service can also end up adding up. Um, hosted VMs do tend to be cheaper, but um, it kind of depends on what you need. So if you need that on-call service, you can choose to do that. Some places will actually also charge you based on how much you're using them. So like, you know, 100 calls a month is one cost and then 300 calls a month is more type of thing. So these are some options for how you could potentially deal with a NoSQL database if you wanted to do the, you know, database as a service type company, or if you wanted to host your own VM. That's kind of how that might end up working. So that is NoSQL scalability. I hope it was helpful, and I hope everybody is having a lovely day.